Inspiration is a word with multiple meanings. We can draw it from someone's previous achievements, a push from a mentor, or we might see it in a current example. All of these apply to Sandra Frazier. Sandra's story begins as a young student looking for direction. So, um, born and raised in Louisville, I actually grew up in Prospect, and uh, my father was a real estate developer. When I left to go away to college, um, I really had no clue what I wanted to do. I chose history as my major simply because um, somebody told me it's a great major to have if you don't know what you want to do because you will learn to write, you will learn to research, you'll learn to analyze, and you know at the end of the day you can always go to graduate school. Sandra first attended Hollis University. While she was there, the example of fellow students set a course for her future aspirations. You know, I suddenly was surrounded by other young women who were looking at, you know, going to law school, looking at being doctors, um, and, and just incredibly career driven. After her freshman term, Sandra spent the next year in two abroad programs. Upon returning to college, she gained a renewed focus on life and a new ally. The advisor who I was assigned, she was um, a, a woman who was sort of known for being a stickler about things, but when I took in my course work to her to get her to sign off, for registration, she looked at the paperwork and she said, you know, I'm not going to sign this because she said, you know, these are easy courses. And I said, well, yeah, but I need to get a good GPA. And she said, well, here's the thing. She said, it's far better, in my opinion, she said that you get a mediocre GPA, but you take harder courses and you work harder to get the mediocre grades than just to kind of coast through. And she said, you know, when you go to graduate school, that's how you stand out. Really, that was kind of a turning point. You sort of had other people kind of saying, you're capable of doing other things. While Sandra was finishing college, her father was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. So she returned home to be with her family. Fortunately for Sandra, Mr. Frazier still had much more wisdom to pass on. At the same point in time, while my father was ill, he was great about really kind of putting me um, in situations where, you know, if I didn't have a summer job, I would go to his office and work with his bookkeeper and learn to do basic old school accounting. But at the same point in time, also explaining things like, this is how you read a stock report, this is how businesses work, um, and, and that kind of thing. So there was, there was a whole bit of like entrepreneurial bend on that, but it was a lot of stuff that again, you know, looking back now, it, it was so helpful. After her father's passing, Sandra was inspired yet again by some trusted advisors. He passed away in December of 94, and I had just finished up my thesis, and um, so I was kind of home, and you're sort of like, what am I going to do? And what, what was great is there were a number of his um, professional colleagues and personal friends and family friends and sort of a group of people who I kind of refer to as like Dutch uncles and said, look, you know, you're 22 years old. You've got this whole life ahead of you. You need to look at graduate school. You need to look um, at going to some other things. Graduate school at Boston University was Sandra's next step, where she earned an MBA and a master's in communication. During this time, an internship at Fleet Boston was the catalyst that kicked off a 20-year career in public relations that culminated in the opening of Tandem Public Relations in 2005. Sandra founded this company based on her love of community. She. She wanted to make sure particularly nonprofits had the ability to hire world-class communication counsel regardless of their budget. You know, one of the things from day one that Sandra established was our intern program. And she instilled upon us that it's not so much about what we can get from them, but what we can give to them. Anyone that knows Sandra through her business, civic, or charitable appointments knows that her personality and work ethic leaves a lasting impression. The thing that one walks away from any extended time with Sandra uh, is the, this blend she has of her both sense of humor, uh, uh, what I call quick and almost sarcastic wit, uh, which to, to me uh, sometimes can be overwhelming to the seriousness of her positions. Uh, she is wicked smart on a lot of topics and what I've always appreciated about her, whether it's in a formal setting like a boardroom, uh, but mostly in informal settings, is her 
ability to humanize the topic, uh, the ability to uh, use you know, her words and her humor, frankly, uh, to bring unique perspectives to topics. Throughout her career, Sandra has made service to her community a top priority. She has served on the boards of numerous organizations and has enjoyed political appointments, such as the Louisville Zoo Foundation and the University of Louisville Board of Trustees. But there was one project in particular that stood out among the rest. And this always surprises people. Um, it would probably have to be, you know, Bridges. Bridges was fascinating because um, it was an incredibly thankless job. And I think if you were to take me back to, you know, the really kind of two or three years that we were immersed in it, it was, a, it was an incredibly miserable time. Sure. But what made it so rewarding is we came out of it and there was definitely these incredible friendships that, that came as a result of it, that now you can just pick up the phone and call them. And um, it, it, was, it was a great thing to be a part of. Um, and when it wrapped up, I think we were all thrilled that it was wrapped up, but I think there was definitely, um, it was sort of like we had lost our, uh, our group. Prior Junior Achievement honorees say this recognition can mean many things. For Sandra, it's about a family legacy. I sit there and I look back and my great-grandfather was in it. Um, you know, I've had other family members who are in it, which is terrific to kind of be in this next generation. And so it is a compliment to be included. Um, but at the same point in time, um, I still kind of feel like I'm too young <laughs> to be yeah. in it. Sandra Frazier is a tremendous example that with a little belief and positive encouragement, we all have the potential for great things. I think with Sandra that she is so deserving of it. and. I mean, it's the story of a person who's made a tremendous impact in a very short amount of time. And so I do believe it's just the beginning for Sandra, though. The fact that she has grown this business the way that she has, the fact that she's given so much to the community, there really is nobody better for this kind of honor. So after all of these accomplishments, what's next for Sandra? Well, we have just renewed our office lease for five years. So I say we've got five more years to figure that out. So.